This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live, brought to you by Lee Health. Southwest Florida, welcome to another edition of Lee Pitts Live. Of course, I'm your host, Lee Pitts, and I'm so delighted to have my cup to sit on this table in this fabulous place. The Naples Botanical Garden. It is a spectacle indeed that everybody needs to partake in. You're going to learn a lot about it. We'll get a chance to talk to the CEO here, Donna, CEO and President Donna McGinnis. Also in the show, we'll talk water safety. We got some fabulous people here from the Florida Department of Health, Andrea and Patty. And we may have a surprise and we may not have a surprise. All this happened on Leap is Live. We'll be right back. So if he doesn't show up, that part where I say we may have a surprise. And we Southwest Florida, welcome back to Lee Pitts Live. We're so thrilled. This is my favorite place. You guys know over the past 27 years or so you've been watching this show and you haven't seen us in a setting quite like this. You've seen us in some parks and so on, but nothing quite like this. So let me go on record right now that the Naples Botanical Garden is Lee Pitts Live's favorite place to be of the hundreds of places that we've been. And I'm so thrilled to welcome here Donna McGinnis. Donna, welcome to Leap is Live. Thank you. It's terrific to have you here in the garden. I'm thrilled to hear that we are your favorite place. Uh, after this interview, I will determine that it's finalized. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> that good with you? Absolutely. Well, I, I, the accommodations have been outstanding. You guys have been an excellent host here, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to coming back in the future. Thank you. Well, this is... Um, an honor to have your show here. We know you have a lot of viewers, so we hope many of your viewers will come see us for the first time, thanks to you. What can they expect to experience when they come here? First of all, describe where we are physically right here and kind of give us an overview of the property. Sure, so right now we are sitting in the Asian Garden. So when you come to Naples Botanical Garden, you have several very unique smaller gardens that you can experience. So you can go into the Brazilian garden, you can go into the Caribbean garden, you can go into a Florida garden, which is all about Florida and its plants. And in this lovely spot, um, the Asian garden is all plants and structures and sculptures that you would see in that part of the world. You see, when I first was told that we were gonna be taping the show in the Asian garden, the first thing that came on my mind, okay, the concept is like Epcot Center in Disney World where you can go to all these different countries <laughs> uh -huh. and what you just described I'm just making it simple for the people it's similar to that you can go into different parts and you can can you take all of that in in one day you can so I would say our typical visitor probably comes and walks through the garden it'll take a couple of hours to walk through the garden and you can also stop and enjoy at our fog cafe a cold drink a lunch if you would like to we also have a lovely shop a lot of people like to shop here and there are a number of activities that might be happening on any certain day. So if you're a home gardener, you might find um, a talk, somebody giving a talk on how to plant your bromeliads or things that you can do on your lanai. Um, you might find a nature walk led by somebody. So there's always a lot of activity. Now we have your website and phone number appearing on That's screen. Right. These things that you're talking about, your website is always current on what's going to be happening. At Absolutely. Absolutely, naplesgarden.org. Okay, and phone number, do you have it off the top of your head? 239-645-7475. For radio purposes. Now, the um, you've been here about a year. What's your background? Right. So I actually came up through um, cultural organizations. So I came from museums and then to botanical gardens. So I came here in January from Missouri Botanical Garden in St. Louis, which is one of the big American gardens, one of the real old ones. So. Chicago and New York and Missouri and Atlanta and Denver have been around for a long time. But this garden has been on the radar with all of the others um, because even though it's very young and pretty new, um, it has the most exciting plants in it. So mm. the things that we grow in this garden, all of the northern gardens can only do in a greenhouse. That's right. And we, Naples, we have in Southwest Florida, we have one of the finest botanical gardens here in Naples. And our garden, us, we have a, won awards. Tell That's us about right. the award. So over the summer of 2017, uh, we brought home one of the biggest trophies you can win in mm. the garden world. So it is called the Award for Garden Excellence, and it's given by the American Public Gardens Association. So we're on the national map. Our, we are on the national map. So, um, so what that means is our colleagues at the other, as we call big gardens up north, um, have let us know that we have done it right in terms of the horticulture 
and the design and the programming out of this garden. So we are also the youngest garden to have ever received that award. Excellent. Now as a layman, I'm looking at the garden and it looks like everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. But we did have a hurricane that come right. through here in 2017, Hurricane Irma. Was it a tremendous impact on, on, on the beautiful garden? It was. We suffered a pretty significant damage. Um, we had someone out here a couple days after the storm that described it as a bowl of chopped salad. Really? Because there was so much plant debris all over the place, much like people's neighborhoods and their own homes. Mm -hmm. So it was just shredded plants and all kinds of things. Um, but we've cleaned it up really well. At the end of the day, we got the garden back open in three weeks. Um, 500 trees went down, but we got 200 of them back up. Excellent. So we felt uh, pretty victorious at having done that. So your average person would visit the garden now and not realize anything happened. Amazing, because you know what? Um, when the hurricane came through, mm -hmm. it didn't even cross my mind that it may have affected Naples Botanical Garden. Mm -hmm. It really did. And, and this is what you guys are all about, trees, plants, and so on and so forth. Right. Now, we're very lucky in this part of the country, though, that things grow so quickly. And, you know, if you go into the northern part of the U.S., you would never try to put a tree back up that had fallen mm -hmm. down. So that was a new experience for a lot of us. But we really feel um, we had more than 100 volunteers show mm. up to help us. And we had professional staff from six other botanical gardens come down to Naples to help us save as many plants and trees as I possible. See. So you, everybody in that industry, love, uh, plant mm -hmm. lovers, and yes. you all work together to help each other. But what type of preparation would you do in a situation like this to prepare for a hurricane? So, you know, the biggest thing that we learned um, and that we hope that we can really share with the community is planting trees um, with other things. So if you plant trees in groups and put a lot of other plants around them, that buffers the wind so much better. So a single tree in a parking lot is just going to be very vulnerable. But if you have a group of trees together, and especially if you have palms around them, they um, withstand hurricane force winds much, much better. Um, and the other piece is to trim the trees really well. So the more you can trim it back, even if you do it more than you typically would on an annual basis. Trees that are trimmed right before a hurricane stood much better than those that had big, big branches. Um, and mainly we learned too a lot about the quality of our trees, the things that maybe were donations that we used to fill in in our landscape, but maybe had been sitting in pots for a long time, just didn't do nearly as well as things that we had grown from seed ourselves and put into a landscape. So a lot of lessons learned, but we'll be actually rolling a lot of that out to the community for homeowners associations and neighborhoods. So as they're replanting their own landscapes, they can do it smart. Also, they, some of those things that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. along that way, that education process can take place here. You have different uh, workshops and different we things do. so people take advantage of it. We do. We do a lot of workshops around all kinds of home gardening and this area is a very different because we have so many homeowners associations and neighborhoods that do it collectively. Now when I'm moving around here I see a lot of unique exotic plants. Mm -hmm. Was that paying staking to replace those plants if they were damaged or trees uh, after mm -hmm. Hurricane Irma process? It is. So it's very unique what we do here. So actually when you go around the garden you'll see on every plant there's a little metal tag and all of our plants are actually accessioned which means we know exactly what they are and where they came from and they're in a database just like museums in a painting. So you're actually in a museum of plants. So we know every single thing that was lost and needs really? to be replaced. Yes. So, <laughs> that is amazing. It is. So we know exactly what we need to go get, but we will go wild collect it. So we won't shop for it. For the things that need to go back into the Florida garden, we will go out into the Everglades and we will collect cuttings and seeds and we'll bring them back here and grow them and then we'll put them back in the landscape. And for the Caribbean garden, for the Brazil garden, we'll go to those places and we'll collect the seeds and plants. Um, do a lot of exchanges with botanic gardens in those areas, people that we already have relationships with, and bring them back and grow them here and put them back in the landscape. So it'll take a little bit longer, but we're going to get an amazing result. How can the community get involved with what you're doing? I know you have volunteers as well. We do. We have a fantastic volunteer program. So whether somebody has a certain day a week they can give us on a regular basis, or maybe they would like to just help us out on um, weekends when we have special events or festivals, we welcome volunteers. We also have a fantastic internship program and great volunteer opportunities for college and high school students. Who comes here, uh, local, statewide, national, tourists? Give us a general idea. Mm -hmm. 
So we have a lot of people, um, whether they're seasonal or permanent residents, who come a lot. So we have a number of people in the community who come maybe once a month, and we have some people who like to come walk once a week. Lots really? of families come because we have a wonderful children's garden that's very hands-on. They can get wet. They can play around in the water. Um, run around, play in a tree house, all kinds of things. You mentioned so walk. Person can yes. come here and do their power walk? Absolutely. Because you got all the shade right here. That's right. I hadn't thought about that. That's right. You can come here and do your power walk. Now I understand that you can get a year-round membership. That's correct. Talk about that. So you can become a member of the garden, which gives you free admission every day to every concert and a lot of great discounts on um, lots of programs that we have at the garden, whether it's a class or whether it's a discount in the restaurant or the shop. So that ranges anywhere from $95 and up, but a family membership at $150 can get um, an entire family in with free admission all year long. How many acres is this? It's 170 acres total. Woo! So it is big. And we still, what's exciting about this garden is that we still have more to build. So we have a beautiful garden right now, but it will be bigger in the future. Yeah, you just uh, got to one of the questions I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, in the ideal world, your ideal world, Donna's world, your five-year plan, <laughs> uh, what would be different out here? You will see a bigger garden and you will see um, even more education programs for kids. Um, and probably too, you'll see a lot more for young professionals and for families who we know are gonna be increasing in the, in the Collier County area, in the Lee County area. Final question, kids, this is a perfect place for them to do what? Play and learn a little bit while they're having fun. Okay, can't beat it. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show and look forward to getting you back in the future. Thank you so much, it's a pleasure to be here. Let's bump you out. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who can't say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Donna and all the fine people here at the Naples Butanical Garden who are doing it. When we come back, water safety is on tap with the Florida Health Department.